Guys, the 30-year Treasury bond yield reached 5% today. So is this as far as long-term yields will go? And should you switch from short-term Treasury bills to long-term Treasury bonds now? Now, before you consider that, I want to look at why they have been going up while all the experts have been saying that rates have peaked or are close to it. Also, I want to look at who are the bond buyers right now and who are the bond sellers right now. And if you still think you want to switch to some longer term bonds, I'm going to look at what's available and compare them to CDs and AAA corporate bonds. So let's take a look. So Zero Hedge says that the catalyst for soaring yields is that foreign central banks are dumping U.S. treasuries for the first time since January. And they say China's holdings have dropped by about $14 billion to $821 billion the lowest since 2009. Now, some of these sales may get disguised in holdings for Belgium because there is a big custodian for treasury holdings called Euroclear. And so they could be holding treasuries on behalf of China. And so if you look at Belgian plus China treasury holdings, they still have decreased, but not as much as just the Chinese holdings from say 2021 to now. And the data shows that foreigners, both official and private entities, have been net buyers of treasuries since 2021 but that all stopped in July. So from 2021, you see the treasury holdings in foreign treasury holdings have been a lot and have been increasing until this last piece here in July, where it basically just hit a brick wall. But the majority of those sales were not by private holders. They were by official foreign institutions that have sold, which is the first time since January, and they dumped 22.4 billion versus 22. 2.6 billion in foreign buyers. So this is a look of the change of treasury holdings of foreign official institutions only. And <laughs> lately they've been a seller since 2015 or so, but they've been buying up here <laughs> a lot until this huge sell that they had in July. And coincidentally, that is when treasury yields broke out of this range here and started heading higher on the 10 year treasury. Now here's a chart of the 10 year treasury yield. You see back in 2020, it was as low as half a percentage point at the beginning of 2022 it was about one and a half percentage points and what were the experts saying about where the 10-year yield will be well i asked google bard to go back five years and ask me where the experts thought the peak in the 10-year treasury yield will be. And coincidentally enough, they all returned 4.75% on the 10-year note. And this is starting at January 22, going as far as August 2023. And you see, it's color-coded for the same people saying the same thing. So Nick Timoreos, February 2022, 4.75%. November, 4.75. August 2023, 4.75. They're all saying the same thing. Now, he is quoting Goldman Sachs. Other people are quoting Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, Deutsche Bank. So were they all right or are they all staying safe in the consensus that some higher ups at the Fed are telling them to put out? I don't know, but none of them seem to have changed their tune yet, even as the 10 year has gone above 4.75. Now, looking at this chart, long term treasuries are light blue, agencies are red, corporate bonds are green, and corporate stocks are purple. And so all of this light blue was long term treasuries that foreigners were buying up until July when they switched and they started buying a whole bunch of stocks here in the purple. But even that has slowed down over here. So if the foreigners aren't buying treasury bonds, who's buying them? Well, apparently households are buying them. So households now own 9% of outstanding U.S. treasury bonds, up from 2% at the start of 2022. And they accounted for 73% of net treasury purchases from 2022 to the second quarter of 2023. But with less foreign buyers, they say treasury bond auctions have been ugly lately 
and weak demand could be a canary in the coal mine. So last Thursday, when the U.S. sold $20 billion of the 30-year bonds, the dealers had to pick up 18% of the sales, greater than the typical 11% share as more buyers bought. In other words, not they don't want to be buyers, but they want to be buyers when they are getting a much better interest rate for taking on 30 years worth of bond risk. And speaking of bond risk, the 10-year Treasury term premium and yield fit chart here shows that the long-term premium for bonds, meaning how much more premium you need over shorter term bonds to make up for the risk you take by holding it for a longer period of time, it has been negative for a while now. And only now is it just turning positive to the point where it's like 0.158 percentage points, where back in 2010, it was like 2.6 percentage points. And back in 1980, it was like 4.7 percentage points. So let's take a look at some of these treasury bonds and see how they compare to CDs and corporate bonds. So if you're looking to buy bonds and you're wondering if you should buy treasury bonds or CDs or corporate bonds, let's take a quick comparison of them. Now, T-bills and treasury bonds have an advantage over CDs in that, for one, there is no state tax on these treasury bonds. For CDs, there are. So if you live in a state that has a state income tax, you will pay the tax on these CDs. Another thing is that CDs pay their interest at the end of the term. So if you're getting a 10-year CD for 4.8%, you don't receive any income until this thing matures 10 years down the line where you might need that money along the way in every six month period like you do with treasury notes and treasury bonds. Whereas the T-bills, they are discounted at the beginning and so you get your interest at the end, which is kind of similar to CDs. So if you're looking to go out, say two years, the difference between treasury bills and CDs are not much except for the tax advantage of no state income tax on these treasury bills. Now, of course, treasury bills and notes and bonds are considered risk-free. So let's take a look at the best ranked corporate bonds and how they compare. So three month, 5.15 versus 5.5. Why would you buy this? You wouldn't. And so that goes the same for pretty much all the way out to maybe like a five year bond where you're getting 5.77 on corporates versus 4.96 on treasuries. But you have CDs paying 5.75, which is also no risk because the risk on CDs is that the bank goes bad and the FDIC covers it. And that's basically the same <laughs> risk you have with treasuries because it is the government backing both of these, the treasury bonds, bills, and CDs. So if one goes bad, the other one's going to go bad as well. So these are basically the same risk. You can't say the same for corporate bonds. And let's see what are these corporate bonds paying 5.77. Okay, there's only one here at 5.77. The next one is 5% and it goes lower from there. So if you're looking to do 10 years, you got the 4.8 CD, 4.9 10-year note, and you have 6.42 corporates. Let's see that because that's a pretty big difference. But again, there's only one of them here, and that's 6.42. The next one is 5.8, and it goes down to 5.25 for Johnson & Johnson pretty quickly. So it's not like you have a whole bunch of bonds to choose from at this 6.42 rate. So it seems to me that the AAA corporates are not that much different, the majority of them, from these rates you get here. So now what if you're thinking that this is the peak of interest rates and now you want to lock in something longer like 5, 10, 20, 30 years? So you have the 30 year touching 5% today and you have the 20 year. There was an auction today and it was pretty good, but still it's paying 5.26% versus the 10 year 4.89 or so. So why is this interest rate higher than the longer term and the shorter term? This is called the camel hump. And partly the reason for this is because this is a relatively new issue. They started issuing these 20 years in 2020. So maybe there's not as much demand or liquidity for it. So they call this the camel hump. 
But if you look what's in it, so this top yielding one, 5.24, what is this thing? Let's take a look because it says it matures in 2043, right? And it's 2.875% coupon rate. Well, if you look, this was issued in 2013. So what this really is, is a 30 year bond that is 10 years old. And so now this bond trades like a 20 year. So let's look at this one, 3.125. Also, it used to be a 30 year that's 10 years old. So now it is priced like a 20 year bond, what the rates should be. And so that's how you should kind of think of it, that all of these interest rates are just different terms and they can have newly issued one-year T-bills or they can have a 10-year note that was issued nine years ago that has one year left. And so it has to trade at approximately what the one years are trading for. So think of it like this, a 30-year gets issued in 10 years, it trades like a 20-year or it becomes a 20-year. 10 years later, it becomes a 10-year. Five years later, it becomes a five-year or is priced what the five years are going going for all the way down to three months. So let's take a look at this. So you see there are treasury bills here, but there are also treasury notes. So let's take a look at this one. Okay, this was issued 2021. So this started out as a two-year note, basically. So if you're thinking on maybe going longer term on some of these bonds, should you buy a five-year, a 10-year, 20-year, 30-year? Of course, that's up to you. But the longer you go out, the longer the duration is, meaning the sensitivity to interest rates. And so the difference between buying a 10 year and buying a 30 year, if interest rates continue to go higher, 1%, 2%, the 10 year is going to lose less principal or face value than the 30 year. So let's take a look at the 20 year. And this one here that I said is a 30 year bond that's just 10 years old. You see the issue date 5-15-2013. The coupon was 2.875. So this is about what 2.4 percentage points lower than what a 20 year is currently yielding. And so because of that, this thing is trading at 74 cents on the dollar. So in other words, if you bought this thing 10 years ago when it was yielding 3.12 for 30 years and you're 10 years in and interest rates for the 20 year are now 5.2, you lost 26% of your money if you tried to sell this thing right now. So let's look at this 30 year bond that was issued in 2013. It had a coupon of 2.875 and of course it still does going all the way out to 2043. So it has 20 years left on it. However, if you bought this thing 10 years ago and you are still getting that 2.875, but the current yield for a 20 year is more like 5.2, well, guess what? The $100 you paid for this thing is now only worth 71 if you try to sell it now. So you lost 29% of the face value of the bond. Now you will get $100 back per bond if you hold this thing till 2043. The problem is that even if you do, if this interest rate holds up or anything more than 2.875, you are losing money because instead of getting 5.25%, for the next 20 years on a 20 year bond, you're getting 2.875. So now a lot of people say, well, don't worry because as long as you hold the bond till maturity, you make your money back, you don't realize any loss. Yes and no. Because if you bought this as a 30 year bond and now it's 71, you have to hold it till 2043 to get that hundred dollars back. And what that means is if in 2043, interest rates have been 5% or more for the last 20 years, then the rate of inflation is going to reduce your hundred dollars you get by a lot. And you're still receiving a rate of 2.875. And so as you get these twice a year coupon payments, you could reinvest them at 5.25, but it would be a lot nicer if you bought this bond today for a 30% discount or really the going rate. Uh, this is not really a discount. This is the going rate so that your 2.875 bond actually pays you 5.255% per year, meaning you get this 
$2.87 per year per $100, plus you get this bond for $29 cheaper. So the combination of the lower price plus the coupon yield comes out to equaling 5.255%. Now you say, okay, this is a great deal. So why don't I buy this and lock this in for 20 years? Well, yeah, it is a good deal if you think that interest rates will not go higher or they have peaked or they will stay around the same level, then it may be a good deal depending on what your situation is. However, like I said, the longer the term left, the higher the duration, the higher the sensitivity to higher and lower interest rates. And so if this goes up another one percentage point or two percentage points like it did from here to here, this could fall another 15, 20% or so. And you will also miss out on the higher coupon payments. So really there is no simple answer and there's no one size fits all solution for everybody because everybody has a different situation. If you don't need the money for five years, maybe you would buy this CD and get 5.75%. If you thought interest rates were still going to go higher, then you would stay in the shortest term T-bills and stay with three months, six months, nine months, a year, something like that. Or maybe just buy one of each of these and just ladder them up. And so as they come due, if you think interest rates have peaked, you might want to go longer at that point and buy maybe five years or 10 years or 20 years or 30 years or just ladder these as well. But let's be real here. People have gotten used to very low interest rates for the last 10 years that's an anomaly these rates five percent for a 30 year are very average or even low compared to historically speaking what these rates were so before you listen to the cheerleaders on wall street saying that bond rates have stopped going up and this is the top and people should get into long-term bonds just look at this debt as a percent of GDP in the US. Right now, we're at about 120%. And back in the early 80s, when interest rates went to above 20%, our debt to GDP was only like 30%. And so our debt to GDP is now higher than it was during World War II, when it was 112%, when we had to take on a bunch of debt to participate in the war. So can we go back to the levels that we had back here, 20%? or so on long-term bonds, who knows? So with increased yearly deficits, adding more and more to our overall debt, long-term bond investors may require much higher bond yield. Will we see 20% yields on the 30 year like we did in the early 1980s? Probably not, but 5% is not by any historical measures a very high yield for a 30 year bond. Only people that became adults after the great financial crisis think it is. And you might have heard recently Rick Santelli, the former bond trader on CNBC, said he thinks the 10-year note could go to 13%. Now, like everybody else, I really don't know where it will go. So this is not investment advice, of course, but I think long-term rates will go higher and I would not commit a large portion of my money to them anytime soon. Right now, like a lot of people, I'm sticking to short-term T-bills. Also, if long-term rates get too high too quick, it will also kill off the housing market and corporate profits, which of course can create some real bargains in dividend paying stocks eventually. So there's a lot to consider. And remember, it's your money. So don't just listen to the cheerleading side of Wall Street, whose message is always that things are getting better. Invest accordingly.